It's hello from Ramon. And now, it's hello from Darren. It's Darren. We've got a Darren sandwich going on today, and more of that in a minute. First of all, a bit of an excuse. We haven't been on for a long time because we recorded a cracking video about two weeks ago, but... My fault. He's got this Victoria Reverber Rocket Rama. Uh, Victoria Reverber Ramo. Okay. I'm from Essex. I didn't understand that either, but... <laughs> Essex. Any, anyway, ours. and it's a fantastic trem and reverb unit outboard, but... It hums like crazy, and the soundtrack to our last video is completely screwed by the hum. But it doesn't matter because we've got Stephen, we, 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 we sent an email to Steven Spielberg. He's giving us a bit of advice, a bit of coaching, and we're, we're back. And as usual, as you can see, you know, it's, as ever, no production value has been spared. We've got a crew of literally hundreds behind the camera. Yeah. Well, a nice lunch. They, got, they brought in a nice uh, lunch. The caterers? It was amazing. Yeah. Anyway, enough of that. Now, what's the Darren sandwich doing here? Well, before, oh no, before, before that. Before, before we do this. Guys, in our midst, this is a bombshell, in our midst here, somebody has become a music instrument journalist. I wonder who that could be. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bob Wooten. It's true. Yes. Do tell us. It's true. Um, some of you might know of a, uh, a music uh, instrument retail business called the North American Guitar, founded probably nearly a decade ago now in London. Uh, doing very high-end, originally acoustics, but now uh, electrics as well, kind of, you know, luthier built boutique type stuff. Um, wonderful business, wonderful people, wonderful products. And uh, they've now uh, split their location between London and Nashville, uh, which is a great business decision for them. Um, but the guys, the editorial guys that here in London, the basically the, the, the marketing comms guys, uh, have initiated a really fantastic thing. They've introduced an online magazine called Connoisseur, which is really about kind of, it's a high-end lifestyle around guitars, really. Um, and it's only online. It's only available through an app, which you can get at the App Store. The app is called TNAG Connoisseur. Um, uh, that's how you access it. And they've asked me to be a columnist, writing every two months, which is when they publish, about old guitars. Uh, which is really exciting for me because, you know, I, I, I know a bit and I've got a few nice ones, but I don't know nearly as much as a lot of people in this world. But I've got a way of expressing things about these things that they, they seem to like, so yeah. off we go. And I want to say, you know, guys, Bob's a great writer because I've been a fan of his actually writing. When I, before we even started thinking of doing the show together, you used to post some of your writings on Facebook, which were not to do with guitars so much. To but do with my previous career, which was advertising, yeah. and I still write for the advertising industry as well. So it's great to move that over to now guitars, isn't well, it? Well, it's fabulous. I mean, I thought, you know, when I kind of finished full-time work five years ago, started working for myself, all going fine, but as I'm getting a bit older, I'm working less and less, and part of me is going, this is great, this is freedom, and part of me is going, oh, oh, you know, because, you know, especially, especially as a bloke, you ascribe a lot of value to what you do, it's the way we're brought up. I'm not saying it's right, but I certainly feel that. And when I'm not doing much, I feel a bit useless. So to actually be asked to do something that I'm not trained to do, but have learned to do late in life, right, but not about advertising, which technically I know a lot about, but about guitars, which I love, it's just fantastic. Mm -hmm. No, no, you could definitely, I mean, your latest article, you can definitely really just shine through, so uh, yeah. So forward to more of it. I'm afraid, you know, you, you, you good folks out there are going to have to endure even more of my, you know, pious rantings. In He's future. famous. In the meantime, however, today we have quite a show for you. Back to, once again, the Darren Sandwich. Why okay. and what the fuck? Well, Darren actually was, you came, didn't you, and we did an interview a while back, didn't we? Oh, that was, yeah, a long that time ago. a long, long time yeah, ago. Yeah. And, and, and the, thing, the thing about it, we, we won't go into details, but Darren 
uh, Darren was sending me lots of, you know, Darren was doing a lot of research, we're going to go into this, a lot of research into especially vintage guitars. Yes. You know, and, and you had access to not only Bob's collection, but a lot of well, no, other I've met Bob through you anyway, yeah. so. But, um, but the thing is, is you were sending me, you, you know, you, you were designing these guitars and trying to do something original. And what I thought, if I may be so bold, is when you came up with basically, essentially this design, which is three of these guitars are, are, are Darren's latest incarnation of his model, main sort of flagship models. When you, when I saw the photos, and I, I thought, yeah, you've done it. This is an amazing looking and beautiful guitar. You've done it, and it, you know. So, what was the story? You know, from um, well, obviously having. I mean, my my love of sort of vintage guitars, and particularly Les Pauls. I've always liked Les Pauls. Um, um, and then I went to college, learned how to make acoustics, I came out and I pretty much made vintage spec, uh, not all replicas as such, but... Um, Apologies. So, exactly. As yeah. close as I can get to an old feeling, an old sounding uh, Les Paul bit, single cut, double cut, whatever. Yeah. Um, and, and I've since made other vintage instruments that, you know, and I've made everything I wanted. And then I've decided that um, actually, what the art from my perspective is, I want a modern playing vintage instrument and feeling, and that's what I've done. Is with with a kind of unique. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, the main sort of um, thing for me was was getting uh, getting it more comfortable. So I've got a belly calf so on that one. My new my new neck joints that I've taken away the heel, so I've gone full tenon width. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it's just everything to make that playable. More and make playable. it uniquely yours. Yes, exactly. And and, and and I just and not not only that, but then obviously then I've gone for a tele control play uh, style. Um, With I just commented on this. The uh, the selector switch here is angled. It's not in a straight line, and the two knobs are slightly further away from the uh, selector switch, which is exactly what any Telecaster player wants. Because if you're on the treble position, you're constantly bumping into the volume control, which is why a lot of guys reverse the plate and stuff like that. So that's absolutely great. Now, what, what, what's interesting is that I, I think there's absolutely a market here because uh, you guys out there, you, you'll know what's happened to the musical instrument market after lockdown. That new instruments, prices have been stiffening, supply chain has been less flexible. So it's now hard to go into a guitar store and play 25 strats like you used to. It's much harder to do that, even in the big stores. So you've got all those issues. You've got some, <clears throat> don't want to throw too many stones here, but you've got some quality control issues as well in manufacture, even amongst the big names to contend with. You've got the rise and rise of relics and custom shops and the rise and rise of their prices, which are now getting pretty fruity. They are in turn pushing the bottom end of the vintage market up because if you can charge three and a half, four and a half grand, let's say for a custom shop strat, and you're going to drop that kind of money. Well, that's the kind of money you used to drop on a decent single cut junior, almost on a cherry yeah. double cut junior, certainly on a 330, my beloved favourites. So what's happened is the bottom end of the vintage market's gone up. And what this does is this absolutely creates space for somebody who's creating instruments that are absolutely vintage informed, but they're not pretending to be replicas. You can see from these guitars, they've got their own... Um, headstock design. This is the Daniels Guitars headstock design. It's a very attractive design. It's slightly it's Paul Reed Smith, but actually slightly nicer. The, the funny thing, what well, I, I did, that was one of the first things I did with my single cuts. I did uh, a headstock like that because I wanted to straighten the strings out through the neck. That's it. And not only that, what's funny is, is if anyone's looked at Sir Aura, his design is very much like my headstock, although I did mine first. Ah. But we're not. So, so no, no, but from a design point of view, no lawsuits. But it, it, it and it works and it's yours. Yeah. And yeah. so, you, you, so in other words, they're distinctive, right? But when you, when you play these instruments, as we're going to sort of find out, when you pick up one of these instruments, you you're, you're slightly confused. I'm confused as a player because I live in a house full of vintage instruments and I'm a known bloody snob about them. But but yeah. but you know, when you pick up one of these, you, I get confused because I'm going, hold on a minute, this, this is a new instrument. It's just been made. But it's got stuff going on that is like, yeah, yeah, but it's doing some of the things you want it to do most. So let, let's hear a bit of playing of just this one guitar. So what, what are you calling this model down? What's this the, called? The, 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 these models here with, with like the, the, the idea with these models is, is anyone can mix and match. So I want people to be able to mix and match pickups. 
So you can uh, choose your own pickups? Well, as in, yeah. oh, I mean, I'm, I'm always going to be using Mojo pickups, but, but you can use different, I mean, I've, right. I've done ones with Firebird Neck, P90. This is probably going to be one of my favourites, as in like Humbucker P90. One of my, my favourite is a Firebird and a staple. Yeah, and, 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 and obviously, and this one's a staple neck yes, with, yeah, with, a, yeah. with a telly bridge. Yeah. Um, and, and, and you can get all the, the classic kind of sounds. And this, and this one here, this is a filter tron, isn't it? Tiltatron yeah, and this, one, this one's a custom uh, sort of... With like a Duesenberg. Duesenberg Les yeah. Tram, but I did this one for a guitar show, so... Yeah. This one, special although, one off. Yeah, special I mean, I, obviously now I did a... But you're, you're gonna you're gonna let me go home with this one, aren't you, today, yeah? Well, <coughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, but, uh, oh, and, and, and I love purple, so that's an... Oh, Prince. And Prince. I needed a home for a set of... Uh, Mojotron. No, this is beautiful, isn't it? Um, so, so let's hear let's hear this one first. Let's okay. So, we, so in the uh, in the neck we've got a P90, uh, nickel cover P90. Um, I'm playing this pretty quiet, pretty quiet, pretty clean, but. <laughs> it's pretty nicely nicely balanced. If we go to the middle, these are going to be. Uh, in parallel in phase, I think. Yeah, in parallel in phase. I have to say, I've never played a P90 in parallel with a humbucker in my life. So, and already. It's, it's, it's a quite sound. And it's a glinty, nice yeah. sound. And it's, and it's got a bit of a telly coming through, hasn't it? A little bit of telly coming through. Course, bridge. This is important because all the, you know, you get the guys on sunbursts and they all say sunbursts is like a telly on steroids. Jimmy Page. And yeah. And, and you go, hold on. Sunburst, a Les Paul and a Telecaster, totally Same. different ends of the street. No, no. they meet in the middle. Yeah. The, yeah. The, that's that's no, the charm of these great old these, like, no, like this one and this one, they, they cross over in, in tonal sort of variations. And that's then you've the got middle. the humbucker in the, in the bridge. It's got a bit more meat to it. It's, it's, yeah. all, it's quite a versatile guitar, this. Just cosmetically, I've talked about the switch, which I just love that little angle. Um, it's got Telecaster knobs. But the thing I like most about this guitar of all is what I think is quite a brave decision. You've got a flat top with a sunburst and quite a nice piece of figured wood. That's that's uh, figured English ash. Ish, English ash. Yeah. Okay. Stock tailpiece. You pick up some talking Made about. in England. Zero got, coaty fretboard. You've got. Darren, the, are you making these in England? Of course I am. Ain't made in England, guys. We love it. Fly yeah. the flag, and you've got these trapezoid <laughs> inlays like you get on a on a Les Paul or, or an SG. And I think it was the, these guys have got dots, and I would have thought that dots were the obvious choice for this guitar. And I just love these trapezoids because they just, again, they they just put you off balance somehow in in the right way. So what I feel when I'm playing this guitar, the one thing I've talked with Darren about today before we kind of start this video is all these guitars have just been made; they're recent. So the one thing is. Because I'm so used to playing old guitars, I find all these guitars, the necks feel quite new. The, the frets aren't very worn in yet, and the frets are relatively high, and the finishes on the back of the neck. There's probably more lacquer here than I would be comfortable with, but some serious wear on this, and this is going to feel like... The, and the, these are nitro, aren't they? It's just nitro cellulose. Yeah, it's yeah, nitro, yeah, yeah. So, so it's, it's going to wear the right way. The, 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 the profile of the neck, this, this, this doesn't feel like a modern guitar under the hand. Fantastic. So, so Darren, what, what's this one? This has got a beautiful flame maple neck, quite a chunky neck, hasn't it? Yeah, well, the, I mean, funny, I mean, this is an older body with a maple neck. Older body, maple neck. Yeah, and I was going for sort of a... a and, and what is this rosewood? Uh, that one's Zeracote as well. I, I, I really Zero like that. Zeracote? Zeracote fretboard, yeah. Where's that from? Uh, it's probably an African. It's an African one. Yeah, I'm sure it's African. Right. Um, nice and dark, nice and figures like a good piece of yeah, darkish Brazilian rosewood, actually. I mean, it, it's, it's a lovely... Um, uh, fretboard wood um, and without yeah. all the, the you know the, the endangered species importation yeah species and stuff. I mean you know I, I, I you know I've got I've got sort of quite a lot of all of these sort of roses so environmentally now. friendly guitars yeah and, and then I mean I haven't got it vegan here. vegan uh, guitars easy Sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, but, but, but one, of the, one of the things I wanted. Are you for, vegan, Bob? I'm not vegan. I'm Neither a am I. I'm a declared carnivore. Yes, same here. Who'd have known? Who'd have, who'd have thought that? <laughs> yeah. This virility doesn't come from <laughs> veganism, I tell you. Yeah, so. But, but yeah, the, the idea is like something lightweight you can pick up, sounds like an old guitar. Yeah. Uh, that one's seven point three pounds. Seven point three pounds. That one's eight, that one's heavy, and this is probably seven and a half ish. 
But my really lightweight one that I actually sold, that was 6.3, and I've got more coming through. I reckon I'll be able to get a humbuck and a P90 down to about six and a half pounds. So, so let's have a little strum of this one. Let's sit here, help. let's go through some tones here. Oh, do you wanna turn up? Have a bit of Oh, that's, that's what we like it going. Yeah. yeah. focused than a P90, it, it, to me it's got like a bit more chime and a bit more body, so that's nice. Yeah. Um, okay, so and, then, and then if you go to the bridge, yeah. so this is the Telecaster. to the old Gibsons on the back with a burst neck. A burst. So you've got, a, you've got a sunburst guys on the back of the neck. And, this and, and, this has got my sunburst old... out of a metallic, which is, you look at it very closely, it's just a lot of fun to look at. Because um, and, and, you were saying, Bob, you'd love a candy apple red on a, on a no, candy apple green on a oh, strap. Yeah. On a strap. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That would be nice. Um, but, and the other thing is, um, my, all my fretboards, they're all um, the, the old vintage scale, so they're not like a modern Gibson scale, they're, they're literally, you know, 58 to 60 or whatever. Uh, it's the old rule of 18. So, so all, all the fretboards are all based on the old, the old ones. So, you're saying that the fretboards, the way you the, lay the, the fret the, measurements, the, the scale length, the scale yeah, length is the same based. as a 58 less ball. Yeah, yeah, I mean, all the, yeah, in the gold 50s, yeah. yeah. And, and you've got those measurements because you've actually had real. I've got, I've got a 58, but I mean, I've measured yeah. as well. I mean, I've got a 58 double cut basket case to restore. And so these are the one right? of the things is that had a really nice neck, but yeah. it, and it wasn't big though. That was the thing. It was it, it was comfortable. Interesting. Uh, so let's play this one here. So this here is tell us something the, about it first. Uh, it's got Mojo Trons, which are um, oh, and I had a bridge that was slightly overwound, but that's um, who made these? these? They're Mojo. Mojo says, says, it, says it on the Mojo. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, is that the guy that? That I used to know. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that guy. Oh, I, used to, I used to know this guy that used to make radio pickups, yeah. and then he never yeah. talked to me again. Yeah. Don't know why. Yeah, I know, yeah. Tell, so, tell us so the call. Th th this one's fully chambered um, because this was a, a piece of. So this, this is chambered. Was, yeah, this is yeah, because, and it's still quite heavy. It's eight pound, or not heavy. Yeah, but purely. Pounds. I mean, that's Honduran as well. That, feel that. Feel the weight on that. Yeah, that's chunky. That's but, and it's and it's chambered. But that's Honduran, well, everyone keeps saying, you know, back That's a beautiful. About. But, but to me, um, some, I mean, Honduran's been hit and miss for me with weight wise. So, uh, yeah, um, it can be very heavy. Uh, be. And I've had, I've had two, two blanks and one was really heavy, which was mm. like that, and I've had one that was light. Right. So, um, and, and what I wanted, obviously, that I, I, I want, I want decent lightweight. Metallic purple. Yeah. Well, beautiful. I love, I love purple. I'll, I'll do some close up, but that's a beautiful. Sparkly in the light. It's just Cadbury's chocolate, isn't it? Yeah, it's absolutely about it. Cadbury's chocolate. Cadbury's chocolate. And then I did a uh, American. American, I say American guys, uh, American, Canadian, Australian. Now we're going to be frank here, aren't we? Yeah. I don't care. I'm going to be frank if you are. I don't care what country you come from. The best chocolate in the world is Cadbury's by a long mile. Would you agree? Well, I was going to be a little more. Um, I was going to be a little more generous and just say that Hershey stuff absolutely sucks. <laughs> right. So the nearest thing that we have in England to it 
is the kind of blackboard chalk that teachers used to use when they used chalk on blackboards, and they used to use coloured ones like red and yellow. And you remember the yellow was a primrose yellow, and the blue was a kind of powder blue, but there was a brown one, and it was a bit of a dirty protest brown, a bit kind of this colour. And if you put some of that in your mouth and crunch it up, and that's pretty much what I think of Hershey's chocolate. Now, of course, the problem for us Brits is the company that brings you Hershey's also brings you Cadbury's oh, chocolate. Oh, really? Yeah. Didn't know that. Which is, oh. why, which is why I've kind of wound down on the Cadbury's a bit, because it's gradually dwindling. dwindling. Really? Just like the accountants oh, no. killed Fender and Gibson in the late 60s, early 70s, the accountants are in there killing Cadbury's chocolate. Thank God for Mars Incorporated and Galaxy. I'm just going to say, it's yeah, Galaxy they're pretty good. Next. They're pretty good. Yeah. Galaxy, Galaxy is pretty good. So, uh, but anyway, I, I used to remember, I used to go to Morocco with uh, a king, uh, a bit like this, of Cadbury's. And the Moroccans, by the yeah. time I got to my hotel, it was all gone. Yep. I'd had taxi drivers stopping in the street. Oh, can I have some? Because you can't get anything like that quality. Fabulous. Really, you know? yeah. So, anyway, let's, let's go back, back to, to that. Yeah. No stone unturned here, fellas. No. I don't own a single set of the originals or the reissues, but every time I play them, these are the kind of pickups I think similar mm. anyway to what are on uh, Cabernet Telecasters. Yeah. Which I love Cabernet Telecasters. But it's a. It's with the plectrum. It's a 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 Basically, even even here, sort of. But this is a testament to guys. This guy's necks are just absolutely fabulous. They're lovely. And, and but, there's no dead spots. Just, no, talking really, of necks, so from mm -hmm. here, it's probably just the the angle. But that neck looks quite flat to me. It doesn't look as, as radius. It feels no, flat. It's twelve. It's a, it's twelve. Yeah. It feels really it's flat. With twelve, which is quite flat, because vintage would be kind of nine and a half ish, would it, or ten, or. No, according to everyone else, even on the first, they're 12. Are they? Yeah. Well, are, are, well, the, are these 12 that have been refretted? My, my theory is, is that once people have had them fretted or whatever, yeah. then, then the radius changes. It's a, bit uh, like, it's a bit like someone saying, oh, I thought, was it Steve Redbourne's Strat? That's not a vintage radius. No, it's, it's seven and a quarter, isn't it? Yeah, but I think, I think that radius has changed okay. over... But, okay, but this is a question to... This is a really interesting question I'll ask you, Bob, and, uh, and you. So... Your guitar's never had a refret, has it? No. And what does the radius feel like on that? The radius feels tighter. That it well, I, I'm not holding that, so I can't say for yeah. sure. But that looks flatter to me. Okay. And actually, it looks a little flatter than than this one, and it yeah. looks a little flatter than this one feels. So my question is to you, Bob. Do you think that most people are thinking the? I'm pointing over here because Bob's. We're going to bring it out in a minute. But do you do you think that most people who um, think that are measuring these bursts, are these are they measuring bursts that have had a big plain fretboard? Well there is a theory though that, that, um, that on some of the bursts or, or, or they're saying that there could be a 10 inch radius. So that that's another thing. Okay. I mean I because have a lot of guitars radius have had on that. I, yeah, I will do it at some point. A lot, of, a lot of these bursts have had refrets and they've been plain, haven't they? Because you can see from the, the binding it's really thin. Yeah, well, in some cases they have. Yeah, I, know, I mean, in, the, in this case, I mean, at least in, as far as I can see, these are the original frets. Because if one was going to refret this guitar, one would put 59 frets on it. Yeah. Because frankly, it does make them play and sound even better. Yeah. Um, but this one, as far as I can see, hasn't been touched yet. Uh, whereas my gold top, uh, I have had refretted. Yeah. But but again, he didn't he didn't shoot when he shot the neck, pulled the frets out carefully. 
and obviously just tidied the neck up. He shot the neck by just a micron or two. Yeah. Right. He didn't take serious meat off it. Right. And he probably, I mean, and to be fair, he probably didn't flatten that board fully. No. I mean, you only have to do a sympathetic. Yeah. So I think a lot of these these measurements have come from, in my personal opinion, I might be wrong here, but maybe these have been really, you know, refretted three times and planed to death. Well, and then I mean, they're taking it's, the measurements. It's hard to say because I mean, it, I mean. Well, it's been I 60 mean, years, all, hasn't it? But, but yeah. the thing is, I mean, all of those guitars were, were you know, the, none of them are the same. None of them. No. I mean, the, all the different. It's like I played your 59335. The other 59335 I played, completely different yeah. neck. Yeah. Completely because different. Because they were all they were all finished, hand finished, on a belt sander yeah. in those days. So I mean, obviously, you had craftsmen who had an idea of how to be consistent. Yeah. But it was consistent within an individual's interpretation, and there were probably Monday, Monday mornings and Friday afternoons and. And, and, and the other thing as well, I, I wonder whether it's like preference. You know, like some of them are like, a bit fat. Do you know what I mean? I was just like a bit more fat. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. So, Darren, what is your ethos? Are you trying to do the same as Gibson, like make each neck different? All, all my necks are, they're, they're all in the ballpark, but they're all different, all of them. I mean, I, all my, my necks are, are hand carved, I, and there's no machinery involved whatsoever in, in any of it. And the other thing as well is I always finish off my necks with it strung up, because that's when you feel what the thing's like. Yeah. So, so uh, and also, and then, and then um, you know, not, you know, rather than have a, all fat necks or whatever, then I've, I've, this one's slightly slimmer than that one, you know, is so that someone that, that, that wants to come and play can, can you know, this might be a back, baseball bat compared to yeah, yeah. what they're used to, so. And do you make these guitars yourself or do you have other help? No, it's just me. So it's start, just you making the guitar? Start to finish, including the um, nitro. It's really interesting. I've never heard anybody, I'm sure there are other people out there who do this, but I've never heard it said, but the, the idea that you finish the neck once it's strung up to tension, which is so wise, and again, that just speaks against any kind of mass manufacture. Because mm -hmm. that, in terms of manufacturing process, that's a thoroughly inconvenient thing to do. But, but it's, it's the all, right thing. All, to do. all the soul of a guitar is in that neck, and so, how it feels to play. Like, I, but the thing is that I've I've done I've done necks where where I I've, I thought oh maybe I've gone a bit too thin, and then when I honestly when I've strung it up, I've gone this is really good. Yeah. So guys, let, let, let's move on. Let, let's... from a songbook and really yeah. crappy, it would be... So this one's this one's got a really meaty. You can imagine sort of. Sort of real sort of punky, thick yeah. sound. Has that got a song similar? So. feels great and it feels that the neck is quite biggish which is how it's supposed to feel in my opinion I also like this one a lot because the neck is finished um, less glossy so it, it feels slightly less recent for my ancient withered old hands, um, the, thing, hands. the thing I like best about this guitar that I have to say by far I think this finish yeah. is spectacular blue paisley not blue flower blue paisley on a double cut junior, wrap around, P90, volume and tone, Looks bloody great. brilliant. And tell us something about the mechanics, the wood mechanics going on in here, because your neck joins are, are, 
are interesting, aren't they? I mean, well, do, do a sort of contrary, compare and contrast. No, to be fair, on uh, with with a double cut, they're all. This is all based on you know like vintage construction. Okay. So we've got vintage style uh, truss rod construction, all of that stuff. Right. Um, even I mean, like I said, I mean, I've got a fifty-eight. Um, you know that 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 I need to restore. So a lot of the stuff is based on that. Right. Um, but the, you've got a little hill thing here, haven't you, for your armrest? Oh yeah, and I, I, the only oh, thing yes. I did, I did, a, I did a, a small forearm contour, which I think adds to it. And the other thing that I really like is a strap button on the horn, which works. Not, not, not on the heel like it is on the original. Yeah, which I, I don't like yeah. so much. And the reason I leave that there is purely for yes, originality. absolutely. I mean, you know, I've got a couple of guitars here. I've got a, uh, an Epiphone 230T and from 1962, and I've got a, uh, an ES225TN natural. From 1956, and both of them are straight out of the factory with no uh, button, strap button at all. Which means you can't gig them unless you put a piece of string around them or you drill a hole in them. And I'm not going to be a man who drills a hole in those lovely guitars, so they're not really gigging guitars unless you're sitting down. I was going to say that the other thing as well is this is all aged, so the, the blue there that you see that would be what you'd find under an original pit guard yeah. oh, and I then see, you've right. got the aged lacquer on top right. and then it's all checked like a smoky and then it's, it's like all it's all checked as well so sort of smoking bar and yeah, yeah. yeah well they fade over time so this is where you get you know like pellum blue that goes green yeah. it's uh, all that uh, that's, uh, that's uh, what you uh, and who, who made that pickup uh ask mojo again who yeah him <laughs> um yeah Mr. Mojo, um, give me a phone call sometime. Oh, meow! No, I mean, I mean, you know, he doesn't talk, he doesn't speak to me. We're not talking oh, anymore. No. We don't speak, we don't talk Cliff Richard. Yeah. We don't talk anymore. <laughs> oh, you managed to get Cliff Richard into one of our yeah, videos. I love, I love oh. Cliff Richard. That's a cardinal sin, that is. Oh. I love Cliff Richard. Right, now listen, just... You find the calendars as well. Now, the oh, calendars? Yeah, you've got calendars. Oh, check them out, I need them. They're not pornographic, are they? <coughs> no, not well, he's, he's a, you know, he's a half a shirt man. open. He's a religious man. I'd have to know. Oh, I should go, go. Um, right. Now look. Yeah. Right, while while volume's off, yeah. let's just, just just have a, a Yeah, they're both very lively, you see. Yeah. I mean all these guitars, all these guitars are really, you know, they they, they ring and they're resonant, you know, before you've even plugged them in, which is a yeah. great sign. Yeah. I love this. And what about so playing beautiful. a little bit of uh, blue? together too. Yeah, they sound really yeah, I love that. And guitars. surprisingly they've got quite a piercing sort of beautiful airy top end, haven't they? Which you wouldn't think of it. Well so but they, they to me they do some of the nicest, chimiest chord stuff. Um, I mean everyone keeps going on about oh the, the rock and roll and all that, but they do so um, much more. Pistols. They do more than that in my well, opinion. Course. It's interesting how, how you went straight for that kind of you know you know the weird yeah. stuff like that. And they are fantastic for that. I never play mine like that because I'm not that kind of guitarist. Yeah. I sort of play sweet stuff. And yeah. What I think you're a sweet man. man. Oh, yeah. Some would say you're a sweet man. Wait, Guys, you're gonna get out of here. Guys, he's a sweet man. But yeah, but I mean that in all sense of the word. When when I play, I tend to play you know that kind of bluesy stuff, which is more of a coaxing thing. And I find that this guitar is is you know it's kind of a bit humbuckery. 
Yeah, right, yes. It's, it's, very it's got that it's got that wrong tone off, tone off and, and the lead tone you get out of it when it's cranked. Yeah. Oh, I mean, oh, so yeah, right. oh, just, yeah. And there's a fantastic video of Laurie Weisfield playing with Wishbone Ash. Right, there's several videos actually on YouTube of Laurie Weisfield playing. I might put a link up in this video. Um, and they are, um, it's just literally him through his Marshall and a, a double cut Cherry Junior from 58 to 59. Wow. Okay, it's, it's great guitar playing too, but my God, he he, he gets the whole range of stuff yeah. out of a single pickup guitar. And yeah. why do you like yeah. double cuts rather than single cuts? Why? Well, well, actually, I don't. That's the funny thing. I mean, I like them both for different reasons. The, the, the single cut I've got from '55 has actually got a slightly richer, thicker, creamier tone. Mm -hmm. But again, because I'm a you know bit of a purist, I keep the original frets on it. And the original frets are skinny, so it's harder to play. Whereas this has got the later wide frets, so it's oh, easier yeah. to play. So I like them both for different reasons. Right. Have you found that though with the double cuts? They're almost like they're, 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 they're a lot more raw than the single. Yeah, you know, like, I think they are. Almost like like uh, the single cuts are refined. A bit more smooth. And, and, and these are like the skinheads, you know, like with, so. with the bobber boots. I think skinheads, so. the, the punks, and yeah. yeah. Because I think even Andy Summers. Um, um, one of these I think I'm, I've seen it on a police video I might okay. be wrong okay might be wrong but I think it, you know it was the kind of new wave punk guitar wasn't it in the 80s uh, well of course the police came from a little before that I mean they came from the, the back 70s, of punk yeah, in the yeah. mid 70s yeah. but, and, and of course the, the single cut beaten up single cut particularly was yeah. the punk guitar, the punk guitar because they were as cheap as chips in those days yeah. and you could throw them around and hit your your bass player around the head yeah. and yeah. you know what I mean yeah Probably make it more intelligent. Yeah, and in those days, of course, you wouldn't be dead. However great they were, you wouldn't have been dead playing an early telly because no. you would have been a country picker. Yeah. And, that, and, and, a, and a strap would have be been worse. Yeah. That, would yeah. have been, that would have been a, a progressive or, rock musician. Or Les Paul would be like going back in a bit hippie sort of display of wealth, display of sophistication, yeah, yeah, yeah. whereas punk was all about burn it down. Yeah, play the simplest. Yeah. What was the yeah. Elvis? Did, uh, Elvis was so much better than No, he plays jazz ones, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, he does, yeah. No, yeah. I mean, they're one of my favourite pickups. Oh, we're going to have to Yeah. A dog, a dog ear, yeah. even better than to me than, than a soap bar. You know, for some reason, I don't... Tell me why. I haven't put my finger on it. No, not but, I, but I agree but, with you. But I can't work it, and, and I'm building a single car, yeah. right? Yeah, and it's going to have one of them, and now I'm thinking about putting a telly neck pickup in it, right? And because I, I can't work out what I like about that over a soap bar bit, that does it. So now guys, it does things that a soap right, bar does okay, not do. Okay. So one thing with Darren's guitars is that you can, like, you know, I'm gonna, when I sell some of my pedals, I'm gonna put the money into one of Darren's guitars, I promised him, you know, I wanna buy one of them, fair and square. And I wanna- I'm booking my holiday now. <laughs> and I wanna <laughs> buy, I wanna have the Firebird pickup. Yeah, oh, that's another one. And the staple pickup in the neck. So oh, okay. You, what's great about Darren is you can choose, you, you can choose basically anything. You can build, you can tell him exactly, this, as long as it follows this sort of style or, or this style, he's, he's sort of style, you can spec any pickup you want in the guitar, are which I want, think is really nice. Are you also going to have one of those mixer taps that enables you to have freezing cold or scalding hot water out at the same time? Or, or not, um, not on this well, one? Well, uh, maybe not on, on this one, <laughs> Master Bob. A quaker. Uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, is, is that to make your tea in the morning? Yeah, that's to make your tea without boiling a kettle. Bring you for, your tea for the person who's got so so much time pressure in the life already. They haven't got time to boil a kettle. <laughs> oh, so right. I'm, I'm glad you agree on that pickup, though. I, I really do. I really yeah. do. Completely agree. And and it's so interesting because obviously you know I mean my, my gold top for example has got a pair of side bars. Yeah. And that's got pe the, the dog ears. And I've got yeah. lots of dog ears and stuff. Yeah. I, I have to say, I mean the guts but, are supposed to be identical. I know, but. but yeah, I don't know what it is, but but those pickups just so far don't even come close. You might, you know, like, but they do. Ch that does chimey stuff that so far doesn't do. Yeah. So what, what's the future, Darren? What, what is the future? Where can people kind of get your guitar? How can they come and play think, them? Where are you selling them? Uh, I'm, Tell us. Yeah, I'm, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and um, as uh, Daniel's guitars. Yes. Uh, obviously, there is a reason for that, but we won't go into that now. Um, and uh, and I've got a website as well. You've and got then, the website, the Instagram, yeah, and Facebook. Oh, all the, what's all your the, Instagram handle? Just Daniel's Guitars. Daniel's Guitars. Instagram, Instagram, Facebook. You'll find Facebook me on. Same. Yeah, 
Oh, and um, and yeah. what about shops? So have you got them in any shops yet? Or is it just uh, exclusive sort of? I mean, I've got someone I know with a shop and I'm looking at trying to put some in there. But and you're in the guitar it, shows, aren't you? You go to the guitar shows in England sometimes? I, at the moment, I'm trying to concentrate on like the online boutique sort of shows because in my opinion, for us small makers, we, we can't get enough guitars into people's hands. And people are walking by yeah. badge buying, which I want to try and sort of, I'd like to be able to say, well, try that and try your badged mass made stuff and see what you think. And then try not to look at stuff just because it's got a badge on it. I mean, I feel that I've, I've known Darren when he first started, he sort of came over to my place, you remember? Yeah. When I was living in Wharton on Thames. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and, you, and, and and just to see you've now got these amazing, and I've seen the hard work and the research guys, this guy's done on vintage guitars, he's, he's looked at the blueprints, he's had um, guitars apart from the 1950s and he's really done his research. So what you're getting in his product is all of that knowledge and research and all tinkering he's done for thousands of hours in that guitar. And that's why I think these are really special. The the, the next ones will be um, like the carved top. So I want to do like a modern modern burst and a modern custom. Because I want to get I want to order a Neil Young. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Enough for you, you yeah. Know? I mean, I love I love yeah. Bob's gold top. I love his burst, but I I want to update them with 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 my uh, you know with with with, back, with configuration. With, yeah. No, no, not necessarily that, but but I mean with all the looks and feel and everything else of, of mm. the old ones. But I want the modern playability of, of like yeah. the, the 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 back of these lighter. Uh, the, and, yeah. yeah, like maybe lighter weight. You know, and yeah. and uh, that's my vision anyway. Um, yeah, I, I mean I, I love the vintage ones, but they're clunky and outdated to to, to to my feel. So. I want to say thanks for coming along. I think that's pretty much it. We'll, 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 we'll jam, I'll, I'll pick up his uh, red guitar and we'll jam something out here. But um, I think that's it, pretty much, yeah? I think we're good. I yeah. think we're good. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Um, we're gonna come back with, uh, next time our video is probably gonna be the components of the one that we screwed up because of the hum out of the reverb unit. Um, <laughs> and um, all I'd say as an advertisement for it is, hold on to your wigs. But I get one from. <laughs> right, okay. If that isn't cryptic, nothing yeah. is. Here we go. Okay. Hasta luego, muchachos. Hasta luego. Bye.